Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. In this video, I'd like to show you how to make a free flow. A free flow is where you stack a whole bunch of material on top of each other with the expectation, anticipation, and hope that it grows and that material, as it melts down and spreads out, that it creates its own mix of colors, own blend, combination of colors. It's really making your own glass. It's really exciting, super fun way to make art, either to make something that's freestanding by itself like this, or to make component pieces that you might fit into and work into another piece of art. So let me go ahead and show you how to make this. When I first started making these, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. So I started with a clear piece of glass on the bottom and I knew that I was gonna pile this glass up super high and thick and hope that it would grow. So I wasn't sure how much it was gonna grow so I contained the two pieces of art with half inch thick fiberboard. I'm working on a prime ceramic kiln shelf and I'm gonna lay out a whole bunch of pieces, clear glass, dichroic glass, some colored glass, some blues, yellows, a little bit of reds maybe, some purples, and lay all these different glasses out together and stack them in such a way that I'm hoping I'll be able to see and identify each of the colors that I'm using, but I will also get some mix and blends. So for example, where a blue and a yellow mix, I anticipate getting some green, where a orange and yellow mix I anticipate getting another shade of kind of orange yellow something like a sunset color so I'm hoping that I will have all these different variations within the glass which in effect is making my own colors and my own pattern and that is really exciting I learned from making pot melts and comb pieces that this type of construction benefits from having a lot of clear because the clear prevents all these different colors and types of glass from becoming muddy. So you just have a very dark, you know, kind of dingy looking piece. We want bright colors that are exposed and show through. So where, although I'm using some nice high contrast colors, I make sure I layer things with a lot of clear and some dichroic to get some flash and shine and some play off those colors. So when you're making these for the first time, be sure to use a lot of clear, use high contrast colors, and just have fun layering things in a way that you haven't before. It's really exciting to put this type of construction together because you're not necessarily anticipating or hoping to get just a rectangular piece with these you know, different materials. You're creating your own flow and your own color combination and patterns, which um, you know, then you have all these different options and ways to use them. The piece on the left is already assembled. You can see I've got like four to five layers of glass there. So we're really stacking this high and thick. So we're sure that this is definitely gonna grow. So I left a lot of space between the two pieces and a lot of space around the perimeter away from those fiberboard pieces to ensure that the two pieces wouldn't stick together and to ensure that it wouldn't flow off the shelf because I don't wanna damage the bottom of my kiln. I also went ahead and primed the base or bottom of the kiln so if any of this glass does happen to manage to get off the kiln shelf, the bottom of the kiln is protected and the glass won't stick. There really is no right or wrong way to assemble this type of construction. Just use materials and colors that you know you like and maybe throw in a few things that are you know, out, of your, out of your comfort zone to see how they're gonna react and how they're going to affect the finished piece of art. Because this type of thing, when we're building it, we're going in knowing we're gonna do something else with it. This is not gonna be the finished piece. So it's okay to try a little bit different technique, a little bit different materials, different combination of colors. But as I mentioned, I do try to ensure that if I use a blue, that I see that blue in the finished piece of art. If I use a green, I wanna see that green. I also wanna see that green and the blue together. So I get that nice blend and mix, and that, those gradients that make this type of construction so unique. Another really cool about this type of construction is as the glass melts, flows down, and spreads, it pushes the dichroic coating in such a way that it creates a lacy look or and it gives it different variations in density and um, you know strength and that's really cool it also will sometimes dilute the clear pieces sometimes dilute the colored pieces and so you get a really unusual combination of of mixes here which is exactly what we're looking for I don't worry too much whether the dichroic is up or down if I'm working with clear material. The dichroic on black, I do generally try to make that, make, ensure that that coating is up so I see it in the finished piece. 
Here I'm putting the final touches on and making sure that I have plenty of material in all the corners and completely covering that clear glass on the bottom with at least three to five layers of glass. Now here we're going to fire this to a high temperature of 1600 degrees and we're going to hold it there for 10 minutes. That ensures that the glass melts together, flows, and spreads. That spreading is what creates those really exotic color combinations and those variations in shading and gradients that are exactly what we're looking for in this type of construction. I don't usually open the kiln during this phase, but I thought it'd be fun for you to see the glass there molten hot. Now this piece came out with such an unusual organic shape that I just loved it. I decided I'm not cutting that up. I'm just gonna take it as it is, stick it in this big beautiful mold and slump it to give it a nice contour. And here it is coming out of the kiln with this beautiful shape. The shape really accentuates the colors, the shape of the glass, how it has this nice kind of organic soft edge quality. And look at all those colors, how they work so nicely together. We've got some yellows and oranges and different shades of green, different shades of purple. Just love it. You can get more in-depth instruction on how to make this piece plus three others in my video, Go With The Flow. It's available on my website. Free flows are a great new way to play with glass and get something totally different. Now here I took the free flow as it came out of the kiln, didn't even change the edge, and just put it on this awesome base because I thought it was so spectacular, I didn't want to change anything. Of course you could cut this with a saw if you wanted to, and you could use it as component piece and some other pieces of art. But anyway, it's a lot of fun, great way to use up scrap glass, great way to, to be creative and not necessarily be in control or know the outcome all the time, which can be very liberating and free and fun way to construct and to build new pieces of art. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed learning how to make this free flow. I hope you try this technique on some of your new projects coming up. And until next time, thanks for joining me.